Thank you. Um, and good morning once again. Um, I think uh, in your introduction, you said who I am. Um, my name is Ebuan Wominsa, and I'm the CTO for IT Consortium. Um, and um, the interesting thing is that uh, my background is not in, in IT or even in science. I, I read geography and economics uh, for my first degree and then um, went on to do an MBA in MIS and then um, start this company. But I think I'll, I'll begin my presentation and talk a little bit about um, my journey. Um, hopefully some of you would, um, it will resonate with some of you and then we can take some questions. So, so um, it, like it was, I mentioned- I'm sorry to cut you. Um, I'm so sorry, but just, just before you get started, let me quickly remind everybody that um, we, you can ask your questions. We just do not want it to, um, make, to, to interfere with the seamless flow of the presentation. And so if you do have questions as Ebo proceeds, please do put them in the chat and we'll be sure to address them. Um, also, while you're at it, kindly do log on to our social media and let other people know, send the invites across and invite other people to join as well. And so welcome and thank you so much, Ebo. Please go ahead. All right. Thank you. Yeah, so <clears throat> I'll start with um, um, uh, my journey or our journey as, as a company. Um, when I was in university, um, this was in 1996, um, I forgot what it was, third or second or third year, but um, I met a professor who um, knew that I, I had a knack for um, using computers. And, and basically, I, I used to help um, my dad, who was a lecturer then, um, to, to type some of his documents, <clears throat> his papers he would publish. So he came to see me and asked whether I could help him, his secretary, create a template um, to record his students' grades. And that introduction um, got me to start thinking about how I could do it better than just creating a Word template or an Excel template for that. And that led me to build my first solution, um, which I, I think I called it Assessor. And um, that department used it successfully. And when I did my, um, when I completed school and did my um, service with, with the university, um, there were a number of other departments who then um, wanted the same solution for the electors. So I set up my first company in 1997 um, called Minds Development House and um, started providing that same solution to um, basically teachers or lecturers who, who needed a solution um, like that. And bear in mind, this was pre-internet days. Um, from, school, from, from first degree, I, I read an MBA in uh, MIS at the University of Ghana. And whilst I was there, um, myself and a few friends um, decided to set up, come together to set up a company. So I stopped the old company and then we set up IT Consortium. And so it was founded in March of 2001. And at the time, our main objective was to build solutions for higher education institutions um, that would automate the processes that uh, the students and the staff have to go through in order to um, uh, either process uh, results, um, get uh, um, um, re transcripts, reports, you name it, student IDs and, and all that. And at the time, it, it was quite nouveau. Um, all the other solutions around um, were Unix-based solutions, black box, and we were presenting a solution that was um, what you see is what you get. Um, um, GUI interface, um, uh, very friendly. And so we had initial success in getting interest, but one big challenge at the time we had was um, how to sell our products. Um, most of our clients did not believe that a Ghanaian company or um, some um, kids right out of school could build a solution um, like we had built. And so they didn't have much trust in it. And so 
we spent a lot of time trying to just convince people, making concessions, at times giving the solution for free for a while, just to be able to um, convince people to um, uh, 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 purchase it. And, and that was a, a big challenge. We, we needed to really innovate um, to be able to do that. But we managed to break a number of those um, barriers. And in 2007, we came up with um, a payment platform we call Transflow. And so we divested into that area. And how our whole aim at the time was to let it augment the solution we already had for educational institutions. But that took a life of its own. And in 2010, um, uh, because of the reputation we had gotten for our payment solution, which was solving a lot of payment problems, um, um, at a time when the only means of paying to an organization was to walk to a bank um, and then do payment. Mobile money came in and all you could use it for was to transfer money. And so um, our relationship made it possible for us to then extend payments um, to uh, mobile money. So that changed um, uh, the trajectory of our company. And um, we started seeing a lot of positive growth from there. Um, around 2005, we were... Um, now considered as a financial technology company. Before then, we, we were calling ourselves an aggregator, aggregator of payment, but we became a financial technology um, um, company. And then eventually we expanded um, outside of, of Ghana as well. Now, it's been 20 years, 21 years since um, um, we started this uh, company. Um, it's, it's a very long time. And there are, there are a number of lessons um, we learned, and I'll just talk about three of them. Um, for us, um, the most important was our dependence on, on God. There were many times we um, wanted to give up. It, it, it was difficult. It was challenging. Um, there were difficult decisions to make. At the time, we had um, agreed as... Um, partners that we would want to do business the right way. So we're not willing to pay bribes. We're not willing to cut corners. And if you take such a decision, then you would most likely pay the, um, 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 the penalty for it because you would lose business um, for taking such a stance. Um, you, 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 you probably will not even be considered for certain opportunities um, because of what people's interests are. But um, we, we stuck to it and um, it, it paid off at the end of the, of the day. Um, people know us to um, be reliable and um, trustworthy and that counts a lot in, in, in business. So just not just being trustworthy with our clients, but even amongst ourselves as partners. Um, IT Consortium has five um, shareholders, um, um, we are the founders of IT Consortium. Um, unfortunately, we're all men. <laughs> uh, we're, we're trying to spice that up soon. But um, you can imagine in Ghana here, um, a company made up of um, men who are not relatives. They are um, uh, strangers, not like we were best of uh, friends and we met. No, we just met along the way and um, decided to set up a business. And so working together, um, without having conflicts, the usual conflicts that would um, um, break up companies is, is really a blessing that we see we, we currently have. And um, standing on the cause of integrity, um, like I said, it, it paid off. Um, those who were not willing to give us business um, during those days, today are willing to give us business because they know that we will do it right. They know that we are not going to cut corners. Um, they've come to even accept the fact that we will not pay a bribe if you give us a job. Um, and um, it's, it's been pleasant to know that um, sticking to those principles um, really pays. Now, I'd like to... <clears throat> um, that's just the gist of our, our, our journey. And I'd like to delve into um, some of the business tools that um, we've used as a company ourselves during our growth. And like I showed you, um, almost half <clears throat> of our life, um, we had challenges and there were so many things we needed to do to get um, our business running. There are others that we adapted as we grew and 
uh, as you grow bigger, there are things you need to have in place to, to secure um, your business and to make your business um, uh, last. We want to be able to build generational businesses and not just businesses that are reliant on um, the, the founders. Um, if any of us are no longer around, the business must continue to, um, to run. Now, with, with every business, right. um, there are various aspects of the business that you need to have tools um, on. And um, what I'm doing is not exhaustive. Well, well, um, sorry, Abel. Um, yes. just, just before, just, let me just come in quickly before you go on to talk about the tools. Okay. Um, right. Talking about what your background has been and, and how um, IT Consortium started. Um, there's a question that, that, that has come up um, okay. about... So you mentioned one of the one of the biggest problems you had was convincing people um, as as young people, right? So as you started the business young, it was hard to convince people that you could do this. Um, the question is, what are some of the strategies and the innovations that you had to put in place to get your name out there to get to put across that yes, you were you were good for this? All right. Um, so what, one of the challenges we had was. Um, in, in pricing. Now, when, when we started um, our company, um, we, had, um, we, we had chosen an area where we had competition already. And um, virtually all that competition was from foreign companies. And so we knew how they priced their products. And uh, just to give you an idea, at, at the time, the software we were selling, our competitors were selling it for um, between $1.5 and $3 million. Right, and um, what we had built, we couldn't justify paying, charging anything close to that. And so, I think our first bill for our first client was a um, hundred thousand dollars, and um, it it was a big um, argument. These were our our um, lecturers and registrars of the university where we had. Um, schooled, and they saw us as small boys, and, and they couldn't understand yeah. why we were charging them that. Um, they managed to reduce the price um, and, and take it up, but it was impossible for us to use that same model um, anywhere else. They, they rejected it outright. I mean, they were not willing to pay for it. In fact, some rejected ours and went to pay um, 10 times more um, to a foreign company because they, they believe that a foreign company must know what they are doing. So in, in, in trying to overcome this, we had to brainstorm and think, how can we make this work? And so we came up with um, a, a, a fee model that was based on the population of students who register every um, semester. And so that became a very small figure um, that their institution could relate to. When you said you were charging them uh, five CDs, um, in fact, sorry, it was two CDs a, ten, sorry, a semester, um, they didn't see that as, as, as large because nobody really took a calculator and calculated, okay, two CDs times um, 10,000 is equal to this. Um, they didn't. And it, it worked like magic. Um, now they were accepting the solution. They were willing to um, um, pay for it. And that's how we then got into um, uh, a lot of the private universities because now we had uh, come up with a pricing model that, that worked. And this pricing model, um, we, we brainstormed to come up with it. None of our competitors was using a method like that. Um, okay. In fact, others later uh, came to learn from that. Um, I remember there was a business we lost. Um, we were charging four cities at that time. We had done an upgrade and we were charging four cities per student. And our closest competitor was charging $25 per student. And guess what? They won the contract. Um, but after two years, they couldn't deliver. And um, we had to go back to it. Yeah, so that, that's one of the examples. And I think that difficulties cause us to innovate, right? Cause us to find solutions to the problems. I mean, in this life, we are to find solutions to problems, right? And so when we encounter challenges in our business, it's the time to go back, think, um, and find ways to overcome because that's what makes you better. That's what probably will give you a breakthrough um, that um, 
um, you, 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 you couldn't have thought of if you did it in, in a different way. And if you look around the world, um, um, those who've created great solutions, they've done um, uh, similar things. If you look at what uh, Elon Musk is doing with um, uh, SpaceX, um, he, wanted, he went the traditional way. He wanted to buy a rocket, uh, uh, sorry, a missile from, a ballistic missile from Russia um, and then build rockets from that. And, and they laughed at him and said they would not sell it to him. And so he had to go back think and then he created this new product that could be reused and it's he's the first one to do it and people look at it and they are amazed how did he do this if he was not rejected if he did not have those challenges um in his way probably um they wouldn't have gotten to this stage um, um either because nobody in the industry was thinking about doing that um, they were content with um what nasa had started and they will just follow suit. And there's a lot of money in, 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 in that. So, so um, let's look at our challenges as stepping stones to um, breakthroughs. Yeah. Right. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ibu. Um, is, there any, is there anybody who has questions for Ibu as, as, of, as of now? Are there any questions for Ibu yet? Okay. Walanyo well, wants to know how you are able to select trusted partners for your business, how you were able to select trusted partners for your business at that age. Okay. Um, well, um, I wouldn't say it was intentional. Um, so let me give you an idea of um, uh, the people that I partnered with. Um, there, there was one, um, one of the partners was um, a, f a s a brother to a friend of mine. Um, there was this lady who I was in university with. She was a year ahead of me. And um, her roommate was my, um, my course mate. So I used to go to her room a lot. And she introduced me to her brother. Uh, he was a very enterprising guy. And um, we became friends very quickly. And he always used to like talking about business opportunities. And while I was in university, just like me, he, he would try and do um, some business gigs here and there. So when we came out of university, um, that's first degree. And he came to visit me um, when I was in my second degree and saw what I was doing and felt that, hey, look, we could, we could, we could um, expand this to do greater things. Um, so let's set up a company. Um, I was willing to because I was comfortable with him. It was someone I knew um, for a number of years and I was comfortable with him. Now, we were not just a, the only two founders. He had a friend who he, he, he introduced to me who I knew nothing about, um, but um, the guy had a, 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 um, an expertise in networking. And um, he was also a programmer at the time. And he thought that that would be a great combination. So we decided to add him. The third person was the big brother to... Um, a mate of mine from secondary school. Now, I knew him when I was in secondary school. I knew the big brother himself when I was in secondary school, but um, I never spoke to him, never greeted him. He had a, an expression on his face that um, uh, kind of put me off. It's, he seemed always angry. <laughs> but yeah. I met him under very interesting circumstances. There was a company that wanted to buy my first company and buy my products. And he happened to work there. So I went for a meeting, um, negotiation on, uh, uh, meeting on it. And when I walked out, and he came to see me and told me that, look, um, they are going to give me a bad deal. I shouldn't take the offer. And I was very confused because, yes, I knew him by face. I didn't really know him. I knew his brother. And he worked in that company and he was coming to tell me this. And I really wanted the deal. I, 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 I was so excited about it. But I decided to take his advice and it turned out to be true that they were trying to play a fast one. And since that time, he had been visiting me in school and we had been talking about business. So he came around the time we were thinking about IT Consortium and um, he was added to it. Now, these are the ones I started with. Um, as I mentioned, one I knew very well. The other two, I didn't. But 
um, they had their various expertise. The last one I spoke about had expertise in, in sales and marketing. And I was someone who um, uh, didn't like sales and marketing at all. Um, I'm, I'm a very shy person, um, if you can tell. And, and so uh, often going to sell a product was difficult for me. Yeah, I could create presentations on the product and talk extensively about it, but that was a challenge. So um, I, I didn't, or we didn't intentionally choose ourselves, but out of circumstances that occurred. But I have to mention that prior to that, it was something I was praying about um, because I knew how partnerships um, went. And so it was something I spent a lot of time prior to um, actually setting up the company um, praying about. And I had a mentor when I was in undergrad. Um, he was my lecturer. I would often go to him for advice. At the time, he was an um, IT manager for one of the state corporations. And um, I, I'll go to him for advice. But he was the one who advised me to do the MBA. And so I will, you know, um, bounce it on him. And his, his, his advice was always to pray about it. And so he gave a blessing. We started a company along the line. Um, when we're having challenges, I went to pick this mentor to join us. And today he's our CEO. And, uh, and uh, we've, we've seen a lot of growth from his leadership. When we entered the mobile space, we needed expertise in uh, someone who had great expertise in, in, in the mobile space. And that's where um, we found a company that we worked with for about two years. And when we saw how well we worked together, then we decided to merge and basically buy his company. And he became the fifth member. And so I, my advice would be, yes, um, um, you need, it's something you need to pray about. It's something you need to think carefully about because if you are going to have partners, they must have their roles. They must have... Um, a way by which they contribute to the business. Um, it's a challenge if uh, the workload seems to be on just one person. Um, and it's also important to have agreements ahead of time. You know, it's very easy to share small money, but it's very difficult to share big money. So if agreements have not been made and pro properly recorded with the register general and so, so on and so forth, when the business starts making money, you would have problems. So when those things are set up in the beginning, it makes it a lot easier. And it's also pays to be transparent with each other. And, and it will work. I, I, there are a number of other companies I know um, who have thrived as partners. All these are Ghanaian companies and, and, and they are doing well. Some of the um, other big fintechs in the industry um, started in a similar way and they've been successful. Yeah. I hope that helps. Right. Thank, you. Thank you, Ebo. Um, Wolanyo, is your question answered? Does that answer your question enough, Wolanyo? Okay. Right, so, so, so Wolanyo says his question is answered. Um, we'll take one last question for this particular block and then we'll move on to the actual tools. Um, Emmanuel wants to know what the best legal structure for a startup is based on your experience. So his question is this, what is the best legal structure for a startup based on your experience in the IT industry and the economic environment in Ghana now? Um, well, we, we set up as a limited liability company um, and um, uh, I, I knew there were partnerships, um, but I, I just didn't like the way partnerships um, run. Partnerships seem to work better for um, uh, law, law firms and businesses like that. But um, because our aim was to build a company that would hopefully outlast us, um, a limited li liability company, um, fit best for us and really um, as I look back um, that was the best option um, if we in the future we are looking to 
get funding, um, that makes it easy to offer shares to um, whatever investor wants to come in. I mean, in fact, for the past 20 years, we've, we've grown organically. So we've not had any, uh, or we've not gone to look for any financing. In the beginning, we were hungry for financing, but um, that challenge and enabled us to um, uh, uh, grow organically and we are no longer in a rush for, for, for money because we can finance virtually any business venture we want to finance. And when it gets to the point where we want to grow beyond that, we, we can. So for me, I think the limited liability company um, um, is best. And depending on what kind of area you want to operate in the IT sector. In Ghana today, IT is beginning to be regulated. So IT consortium, for instance, is regulated by the Central Bank of Ghana. Uh, we can't offer okay. or do the kind of business we are doing without being regulated by the central bank. We'll, we'll not be permitted to do it. So depending on which area we're going to operate in, there might be um, uh, uh, a state agency that you would need to be regulated by. And in that case, you need to be um, um, a limited liability um, company. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Um, Emmanuel, is your question answered? Okay, Emmanuel says thank you. I'm sure that is answered. So if you just joined us, this is the Resilient Ghana Mentorship Program. We're discussing today part two of the Digital Entrepreneurship um, Series. We already have had the part one. If you missed it, you could just go onto YouTube and then find it on the Resilient Ghana platform. And while you're at it, do subscribe. Um, if you are here and you, you are joining us for the first time and you probably just joined us, and you are most welcome. This is a safe space. We discuss things related to entrepreneurship. We discuss things related to professional growth. And so do join us um, on the second Saturday of every month, and then we can have this safe space discussion. And um, we have one here, Eboa Namwa Mensa. He's the Chief Technology Officer for IT Consortium. And we're looking at digital tools that can help you to drive your um, small business and make it better. So we just are about to go into the actual business tools. Ibo, please take us away. All right. Um, so like I mentioned, um, for every business, um, there are various areas where you can uh, get tools. Um, all right. There was some noise. Okay, I think it stopped now. Yeah, I have tools, and I, and I mentioned that um, what I'm going to give is not exhaustive, um, but after I'll give you some links to sites where you can um, um, read more about what probably best suits um, your kind um, of, of business. But, you know, as remote work and virtual workspaces continue to evolve, um, you have small business um, software and tools that can really empower your organization to achieve results faster than keeping uh, and, and also faster by keeping your work organized and keeping your teams in sync and your business thriving. So first, looking at communication, there are, there are a number of tools I'm sure you're already familiar with, with um, team messaging. Um, I, like I said, it's not entirely exhaustive, but um, what we commonly use is Skype and Slack. And so... We, as a company, for instance, work with a lot of organizations, both in Ghana and outside of Ghana. And the tools that they would typically use for engagement are Skype and Slack. Gradually, tools like um, WhatsApp um, is, is, is growing in, in, in use, but these are the, 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 the main ones um, that, that are being used. And I'm sure everybody here obviously has an email address and... The most popular ones are Gmail and, and, and Yahoo. And um, if you even want to have your own domain uh, for your company, you are still able to use these tools to host your email. So IT Consortium, for instance, our mails are provided by Gmail, but our domain doesn't end with at gmail.com. It's at itconsortiumj.com because we simply allow... Google to host it for us. And then in that case, we're able to enjoy um, a whole suite of tools that um, we, we use for um, our business. And then when it comes to video conferencing, um, we're using Zoom. Um, uh, uh, we use Google Meet as well because we have Gmail 
Google Meet is an automatic tool that um, we use. But when the pandemic began, um, that's when we went deep into Zoom. And I believe that's when Zoom became the multi-million dollar company it has become today. Um, they, they got a lot of adoption there. But yeah, Zoom, Zoom has unique features that make certain um, um, setups possible, like using um, breakout rooms. Um, and so in our company, for instance, when we have uh, a major event like um, a deployment of a solution or troubleshooting a problem, um, the team jumps on Zoom. In fact, we use it so much now that even whilst we are physically in the office and people are in their different um, office spaces, we tend to use Zoom um, because uh, uh, for a while we still were social distancing. So this makes it possible um, um, for us to do it without having um, uh, to be in the same room um, together. Um, I think yesterday, um, I even learned something new about Zoom, which I'm going to use uh, uh, in, in our business in the future. So um, these, these tools can um, bolster, bolster your teamwork. And um, uh, one, one great thing I like about Gmail um, is the various uh, features it has, for instance, um, being able to uh, recall a mail you sent. Um, at times I send a mail and then I need to stop it and so I've been able to put a, a 30 second delay on every mail I send. Once I click on send, I have the opportunity to go and stop the mail from going. Or uh, um, uh, our accountant, when he wants to send out um, reminders or notices, our uh, HR department, they can set up those mails um, on Friday and schedule the mails to be sent on Monday morning, seven o'clock. And like clockwork, all those mails are sent to um, staff. And I think people wonder, how does he do this um, right on time? And that's because of some of the features in, in the mail client that allows you to schedule. And, and, and this can create a kind of professionalism in, 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 in your communication that um, people would, would appreciate. Good. Then when it comes to tools for collaboration, in, in IT Consortium, we use um, uh, teamwork projects and um, uh, I, I, at times I like to think we're the first ones to use that in, in, in Ghana. Um, teamwork projects is a project management software and it's extremely easy to use, um, uh, but it costs money. Um, if you are using it to manage about three projects, it's free. Um, you can easily use that for free for a while. And I, I actually have some um, friends who use this for their business using the free account um, and don't have much of a problem because they basically handle two or three projects at a time. Um, at IT Consortium, we do well over 85 projects simultaneously. And so um, we, we migrated eventually to a pay plan. So it was really good for us because we started with it free. Then as our demands increased, we went from one plan to another, to another till um, we got to where we are. Um, what we are paying now, we couldn't have afforded to pay um, when we began using it. Um, and so when you're looking out for tools, also look at tools that offer um, those um, um, plans that will gradually build up as you use it more. Trello is another um, payment software, which is, is free and also versatile. If you know anything about Kanban um, um, boards, um, it's, it's a new way of organizing your thoughts and um, your tasks and um, teamwork actually utilizes some of the strategies in, 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 in Trello. Um, we got introduced to Trello when we did a project with uh, MasterCard Foundation. So they sent some um, staff over to teach us the tools, the business tools they love to use. And Trello is one of them. And that's how we eventually picked up on teamwork and we've been using it since then. And as every business would, would need, um, traditionally, you need to have a file cabinet to keep your files and store your important documents. And today in our digital world, um, we're, we're not printing those as hard copies, but we're storing them in the cloud. And um, two of the great tools to use for that, Google Drive is one, um, and Dropbox. I remember the first time I got my Google account, it had 15 gig and I was uh, wondering, will I ever fill this up? 
and lo and behold, I have filled it up. I've had to pay for um, for more because we, you you tend to have documents you've um, created over years that you don't want to lose. And um, keeping a cloud is quite safe, but it's also good to keep a, a backup somewhere. Um, you never know when something uh, traumatic happens to Google, but um, nothing has happened so far. And they also save this on mot in multiple data centers. So the possibility of losing it is, is low. And um, Dropbox is also a great tool. And I think um, uh, at the last session with Franklin, he, he talked extensively about it, especially his experience using it for a, a music um, project. Um, uh, the great thing about Dropbox is when you're using it with a team, um, it's, 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 it's really useful. And they have a business version of it, um, which gives you even a lot, a lot more tools. Um, one, one of the tools we, be, we started using as a company when we were having meetings was Evernote. And um, it, it, it made note-taking extremely easy because you could just scribble something on paper, take a picture, put it in. It will store the location you took, uh, the note or the picture, um, the weather, the time, so many um, pieces of information that you, you most likely will not capture, even the location of where you were. So you could always uh, uh, go back to your notes and say that you want notes you took probably in Kumasi and um, you were at uh, uh, KNUSD restaurant at the time. And so you can find all the notes and then refer to it to remember something that you, you were looking for. Google also has something like that called Google Keep, um, which is free. Um, Evernote, I think, has paid plan. Google Keep um, is, is entirely free. Then um, we come to marketing. So one thing advice in, in today's um, world um, is um, have a website. Um, when um, I, we began the company, um, we didn't have a website for many years, um, partially because we, we could count our customers on our fingertips. Um, as I said, we're providing solutions for higher education institutions at a time the number of higher education institutions I could count on my two hands were well, less than 10. And so our marketing was directly to them. Then when we um, got into other business, all of a sudden our market had grown so large, we couldn't go to everyone and we needed people to know about us. And so um, we did so many things to create websites. We hired companies to build. Uh, we tried ourselves. We weren't good designers, so we hired people to do it. But then you had a challenge of, um, always having to dole out money when you need to make changes, all right? And so a tool like WordPress um, came to make it easy for um, even non-techies to build a site and keep it updated. Um, so I remember when my wife um, began, um, decided to stop uh, former work and start her own business. Um, the first thing we did was to create a website and um she she loved to write a lot and the business she was doing she had to write articles period, um, periodically about her products and so she could now go in create an article and publish it people read it they respond and it causes sales of her, her product and you can imagine if we're using the old method where you have to call your um, website administrator to put that new information um, up it, it becomes expensive. And, and so WordPress, um, um, the, you have the product which you can install yourself or you can subscribe to their online service. They have a free tier and then they have reasonable paid tier. I think that the cheapest paid tier is around $8 a month, um, which, which is quite reasonable. There's also Wix.com. It's a company out of Israel, um, which is trying to compete with WordPress. And... Um, they, they, they try to compete by giving good aesthetics to and the sites and um, certain automations to make um, uh, uh, certain features more easier for an, an ordinary person to create and, and, and manage. So you can look at any of these if your business is the kind where you need the world to know. I, I would say that in today's world, whatever you do, it's, it'll be good to have... Um, a website and um, use any of these tools um, to create it. Now, we all know that um, social media is a big thing and 
Ghana is a big user of uh, uh, social media, um, virtually all the tools. In fact, um, I, um, I should have brought some stats on how Ghanaians use social media, but it's, it's quite high, especially when compared to other companies, sorry, countries in, in Africa. And um, there are tools to also manage um, social media marketing, um, uh, tools that would aggregate feedback that customers are giving you through the various social media um, uh, uh, services, whether it's Twitter, it's uh, Facebook, Instagram, and bring them to one interface where you can review them and give feedback. And once you're engaging your customers, they feel like um, um, uh, they, they have that personal connection with your brand and your products, and you would you would um, be able to make more sales. And you also be able to learn exactly how, what, what kind of um, uh, activities you are doing on social media that resonates with your potential customers and create sales. And so these tools you can look at, um, like all these tools, some of them have uh, uh, free tiers that you can play with and um, see whether it works well for your business. And one thing we often leave out um, um, at our business is um, accounting. And um, we, we learned um, that as a company um, very early in the business, um, where we realized that it paid to um, keep our books well. Um, I, um, I remember we once attended a, uh, a business forum um, that was created to try and get small businesses to grow. And um, part of the advice you were giving us was that, oh, the GRA allows you to have, as a small business, um, a five-year monetarium on, on, on uh, tax, and so don't worry about that. And that was very bad advice um, because um, what it did was we simply didn't keep books. And um, the day the tax man came knocking, um, even though we may have had um, uh, uh, a tax holiday, they had to give that tax holiday. Um, we couldn't just assume we had it. And they needed to see the books to see the kind of business we're doing. And you see, the fact is, once your business be starts becoming successful, they'll get to know about it. Um, either they might not hear it in the media, but they might find out from your customers. Because as your customers also... Um, do the right thing and um, pay their taxes, declare um, uh, their accounts, information about you will get out. And um, bear in mind that the government's objective of digitizing the economy is it's not just to make things easier. It's also to be able to expand the tax net. It's also to provide information that government can use to make sure that people are complying with the tax um, law. So um, if you're trying to avoid paying taxes, um, please think again. Um, what will come might not be very pleasant. So it pays to keep good records. In IT Consortium, we use zero um, accounting software. Um, there's also Wave Accounting, which is um, very good accounting software. So it's, it's, these are all cloud-based um, um, accounting software. Now, you notice a lot of things I'm talking about are cloud-based. And um, it's also a lesson we learned in our journey. Um, uh, we, we often had times when our computer um, uh, had broken down. We couldn't retrieve information from it um, or attacked by a virus. And um, we eventually moved from PC to Mac because at the time there were no viruses on Macs and Macs were more reliable. We got a lot of productivity out of that. Then we also moved from having fiscal service to the cloud because we could scale better. We had better redundancy and um, just the, the kind of um, functionality and tools we needed that we didn't necessarily have expertise or enough staff in-house to be able to handle it. Someone else is handling it. So when we have software like Zero running the cloud, our accounts department is able to use it without ever having to recourse to come to technical to help them with anything because it simply works, it's there. 
and they have access to it anytime and they, they, they want it. And when it comes to payments, um, IT Consortium, like I mentioned, is a fintech and we provide payment solutions through our software called Transflow. Um, we also have a, a, a tool called Transpay, which is used for bulk disbursements. Um, so if anyone has a business where you have to pay a number of people, um, either to their bank accounts or to mobile money, we have a tool for that. And there is a Ghanaian product called Tiamika, which is a, a soft pause solution that you can use to receive payments. So maybe you are running a business where you sell um, maybe food. People see on, uh, on, on um, Instagram and want to order your food or your clothing. Um, Tiamika will allow you to create a bill sent to them. And when they have paid, your, uh, Tiamika will tell you that payment has been received and you can deliver um, your goods. So Tiamika can be used for both payments and for invoicing as well. Wave accounting um, um, can also be used for uh, invoicing. Now, the only difference between wave accounting and Tiamika in this space would be that um, wave accounting is not does not have any payment um, services that are used in Ghana, um, but Tiamika um, does. So if you go to the site, tiamika.com, I think you can find out more information about that. And filing your taxes. So we've talked about the reason why you should keep your books because eventually you need to file your taxes. And fortunately today we have uh, the Ghana.gov platform that enables uh, the citizens to um, file their taxes. And so if you don't know about this, please find out, um, read about it. And let me tell you what's gonna happen very soon. Um, this year, the government has rolled out um, two very important products or services. Um, the controversial e-levy um, that you definitely know about. The one you, do, you don't know much about is e-VAT, okay? It's not a new levy. It's the existing VAT that they had, are just digitizing so that now, instead of waiting for companies who collect VAT to come and file at the end of the month, government is going to know every VAT that is collected um, um, the moment it is collected before filing is due at the end of the month. So now even you as a business, if you go to um, some company to get a service or a product and you pay and you are charged VAT, what is happening is that information about you or your company is going to go to GRA instantly. And in a matter of time, GRA is going to come looking for you to find out uh, why they don't have records about your filing of taxes. Okay. And so please, um, it's a free site. Go there. You can read all the information on how you file your taxes and, and all that. But I believe some of you have received information from uh, banks and some companies that from 1st July, the only means of identifying yourself is your Ghana card. Right. And today, everyone who has a tax identification number, it's represented by your Ghana card. And as you know, registering your phone is by your Ghana card. Um, everything is going to be based on your Ghana card. So unlike in the past where it was easy to set up a business, run under the radar, nobody knows what you are doing. Um, those days are gradually fading away. And, and so it's better to be in compliance than not to be in, in, in compliance. So that ends those four, but um, there are a few additional tools I want to talk about. Um, and um, whilst you're trying to get your business known, um, you would obviously want to be able to create ads. And um, you're either going to go to an ad agency um, to do that. Even we as IT consultants at times find doing some of these ads extremely expensive. <laughs> Um, especially when we want to do something really small. So fortunately, there are tools out there that you can use um, um, to do this. Um, some of them are free. Some of them just have uh, a, a small fee um, you pay and, and you can subscribe for it for a month, uh, create all the uh, ads you want, and then later on, um, uh, unsubscribe. You don't need to have a year subscription. Now, predominant of them is um, promo. 
Um, and I'm talking about it because I've used it personally. And um, this is a really simple tool. Um, like I mentioned, you don't need to be an IT person to be able to use it. You don't need to even be a designer. Once you can um, use uh, Microsoft Word or Google, Google Docs, uh, a web, any word processor, um, you should be able to use this. And this enables you to create very simple ads. So they have templates and they guide you in putting images or videos, either stock images or your own images, and um, type some text you can put uh, 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 sound over and, and create ads. So I've had some um, friends who've created um, ads out of um, these tools, very simple ads to market um, your product. So you see the one at the top right corner, for instance, was done by Chemica um, um, to market their soft pause. Okay. And when they created these and put it on YouTube, put it on Instagram, they got reactions, okay? They got reactions. And so these are very simple things you can do that cost very little money, um, much cheaper than, uh, environment subscription is much cheaper than um, um, getting um, a professional to do an ad if it's something you can't afford. So these are there that you can um, um, try out and, and, and create um, an ad for your product um, or service. Mm -hmm. Now for um, the building of your websites or even just creating um, um, artwork you put on um, the various mm -hmm. social media platforms, um, you know that often what makes a nice uh, images or pictures. Mm -hmm. And there's one, one site I discovered, it's called Pexels. Um, they have a large collection of um, pictures mm -hmm. and videos. Um, in fact, I've used some of it in, in, in this presentation. When I get to that point, I'll point it out to you. Um, and it's free. They give you the opportunity to donate money to uh, their creators of some of these if you want to. It's not compulsory. So if you go to pixels.com, you find a lot of images. And one thing I like about it is that they also have a lot of images of Africa or Africans. Okay, mm -hmm. so often you find that... Um, when you go for these stock images, they are just full of whites. But now you can get some with um, dark skin colored people, um, children, adults, and you most likely will find something that would work for either your website or um, a social media campaign you are, you are going to create. There's also presenter media. This is, this is a tool I use to get images to create my presentations. So when I'm creating presentations, I like to create presentations that would tell the story of the products. And so um, if I need certain graphics, I can go there and select or even create my own um, in there very, very simply. And mm -hmm. the last one is on exposure and, and insights. Um, you, would always, you, would, you would want to know how people are, re, uh, are using their... Um, uh, your, either your website or your social media services um, and, and be able to tune your, your marketing campaigns in such a way that it meets their need. Now, um, there are two facts you should know that 88% of consumers who do local searches on their smartphone visit or call a store within a day. And 46% of all Google searches are looking for local information. And so knowing this, there are, there, are, there are two tools I think you should invest in. And when I say invest in, it's not costing money. It's just your time. So Google has a tool. If you have a Google account, you might have seen this. Google has a tool called Google My Business. And you can go and put information about your business, the times you open, the location, so on and so forth. And you can use that also to register your business if it has a physical address on Google Maps so that people can find it, okay? Um, if it doesn't have a, a, a physical location, you can still use Google My um, Business to create information about that. And um, when people search, they can find. And once you've done that, um, either f and, and um, you have information on your website, for instance, Google can now start collecting very valuable information for you. So if you look at what's on the screen right now, you can see 
that we are looking at a chart that shows how customers searched for um, uh, business. There were 2,500 um, searches, and some of them went um, uh, directly searching for the name and address of the business. Um, some discovered it in a product category or service, and some um, customers uh, found it uh, 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 relating it to the brand. Okay, and, and this is information that will help you know what you need to do to enable more, more people find um, your business. Or something like that shows um, where customers uh, 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 were, were viewing information on your business. So was it in the search listings? Was it in the maps um, while we're going through um, um, Google Maps? Um, or customers' reactions. Um, did they uh, visit your website? Did they request for directions to your business? Did they call you? And it's quite interesting that it's capturing this. Um, those of you who are in the last uh, meeting with Franklin, I think he told a story of how one day um, he uh, woke up in the morning getting ready for work and his phone told him that if you leave by seven, um, um, you get to the office by uh, this time. And he was wondering how Google knew where his office is and where his house was and he gave an explanation on that so there's a lot of information being um, um, gleaned from um, the services we put out there and you can take advantage by uh, uh, for your business by getting this and so in, in in you see over here too we have a map that's showing actually the catchment area of the business so um, the uh, red dot there is where the business is and then it shows those who are interested in looking for the business or asking about the business, where they are from, you can see they are from Tema and Accra area. And so that could help you um, target, do some target um, marketing um, um, to your customers. So this is a wealth of information that you probably will pay a consultant tons of money to get you this information. And this is available to you for free. And so, take advantage um, of it. I'm sure those of us on this call are either using an Android phone or uh, an iPhone. Uh, if you're using an Android phone, know that everything on that device is virtually Google. The operating system is Google, uh, the services on are Google, and so Google knows a lot of what you're doing. That's what's made uh, 10 by 10 directions possible in Ghana, and that's what's making it possible for uh, 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 businesses to also take advantage of um, some of these. Um, if you're using an iPhone, I'm sure you have a browser on and you use Google. And so all that information being gleaned as well. So they have information on your potential customers. They have information on your business and um, they can give you advantages by sharing that information with you as those people interact um, with your business. So you can find out more information about these tools, um, I, I put um, some two sites. Uh, the URL is there. If you find it too too long to write, you can scan the QR code. It takes you to those same uh, sites, and you can get a lot more information. Um, but hopefully, maybe the questions would zero in on um, specific tools you you might want to um, me to talk about. And at this point, um, we'll take some questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ibo. Um, are, there, are there questions yet? We're looking for questions now. Um, Patrick, Patrick, are you here? Patrick, I would like for you to unmute and then ask your question. I missed a question earlier. My sincere apologies. I'd like for you to unmute and ask your question. I think Patrick's question is in the chat at 9.55. Um. Right. Okay, okay, Patrick. Okay, so Patrick wants to know um, if it's okay to look out for only experts when you're looking for partners. So this is back to the question about partners and he's asking if you should only look out for experts in the field. Um, no, um, I don't think you necessarily need to look out for experts. Um, it helps with certain kinds of businesses uh, to have experts. As I mentioned to you, when we're, we're 
looking at entering the mobile space. Um, it, it was a space we had done nothing before. And there were people who already had the knowledge and had worked in that space. And so it was going to save us probably three years of work to build that knowledge. So um, we, we went to look for the expert. But when I look at the, the beginning of the company, um, those who actually, um, and the initial uh, founders, um, when I say they were experts, um, they just had a flair for, for, for that. Um, you know, there are, there are people today who have flares for different or have a flair for, um, um, with different skills. Um, I mentioned that my background is economics and geography. Um, computing was a hobby. Um, I'm considered, at the time I was considered an expert, but um, I didn't have the qualifications at the time to um, um, and meet that. Um, one of uh, my partners who was into marketing, um, he, he wasn't schooled as a marketer, but in the company he had worked, he had done a lot of marketing and so had gained experience. And you see, in, in, the, in the space of business, experience matters a lot. Um, so you could get someone who is uh, an expert on paper, but doesn't have much experience. And, and so it's not useful. And to give a, a real practical example, um, there was a time when IT consortium decided to stop hiring um, students uh, straight out of the university um, for a simple reason. Um, when they came, they knew next to nothing. And it took us almost two years to get them up to speed to do the kind of things we wanted them to do. So we came up with a strategy that let's go and get them when they are in first year, second year, third year, to come and do internship. And as they go through that internship, they build their knowledge and their skill. So by the time they finish university, when they apply to come, they are half-baked and it takes us a shorter time to um, get them to the point where we, they, they tend to be productive. And today, our best employees in IT consortium all started from that position of internship and then became, <clears throat> did their national service and became uh, full-time um, employees. Some of them who came in, who, who eventually were employed, rose much faster than those who were in the company and um, came straight from the university, had done no internship anywhere else. And this was their first work experience. They tend to be um, uh, uh, more effective um, and, and can get work done um, better. So the experience is what, what we um, um, look for. And people have various skills that are useful for business. So I, I, I know a business where one of the partners is very good at uh, cozying up to um, government officials. Um, he has a knack for engaging politicians. And so since their business has a lot to do with government business, um, that is a big plus for them because he's the one who's able to go and sit down with the minister, have a chat, get him to understand the um, business opportunity and then get the opportunity to um, bid or do that business. While someone probably like me, um, after speaking five minutes, they'll probably walk me out and uh, lose that opportunity. So you, you don't need to look at experts the way we understand experts, but people who have something to offer to the business. Right. Right. That's, that's, I think, is very useful. Um, Patrick, is your question answered? Does, does that answer your question, Patrick? Okay. So, so, Ebo, Ebo someone, someone wants to know how, how easy it is to... How easy it is, in your opinion, for a one-man um, business, being an IT company, to make it in the digital space? What, what is the probability that a one-man business will make it in the, in the digital space? Um, well, it's, 
should I say a 50 50 chance? And, um, uh, but when was it? Two days ago, I was um, having a discussion on the same topic with uh, a colleague of mine. Um, so there was this uh, gentleman from the US who uh, has come to settle in Ghana and he's into IT and he's looking for IT jobs to do and he wants to do with, deal with banks and um, non-bank financial institutions and um, he's, he wants to do that because that, that has been the trend in the past um, uh, 20, 30 years ago you have experts coming from abroad come and do a small gig with a bank make a lot of money uh, and then move on um, but the regulatory environment in Ghana has changed right? And so depending on what kind of IT you are going to do, especially if you are going to operate in the space we are in, where you have to work with regulated bodies. So regulated, uh, let's say financial institutions or non-financial uh, uh, institutions like uh, pension companies, um, savings and loans. If you are going to work with any of those organizations, the laws in Ghana require that any organization that those regulated uh, companies are working with are properly set up businesses, okay? And they would want to make sure that that business um, is a, it will be a going concern and there are no risk of that business closing down tomorrow. Now, um, when I started um, uh, uh, business, if um, I was do what I was doing as a, a single person, it was fine and acceptable. Okay, people would um, accept my solution um, if it works for them and if it's the right cost, and will not think much about whether my company would last or not. But today, people are concerned about the provision of support, and so it's important that if you are thinking about running, if you are running a sole proprietorship. You, and you plan to um, um, uh, serve some of these uh, institutions, even, uh, uh, what do you call it, um, establish limited liability companies, then you, you need to think about growing your business. You can still be the sole owner, but you must have people you are working with, okay? Uh, one of the big IT companies in Ghana is owned by a husband and a wife, Okay, um, there are staff um, probably runs around 50 people that they work with, and they've been serving financial institutions, they've been serving government uh, for so many years, and um, it's a thriving business. So it could have been known by just one person, probably the husband alone, and it will still work. But the most important thing is that the kind of uh, a structure the business is is a business that has the various units that will make it thrive all right um let me give another example there's a company we are partnering with they, they have a, a product we're looking to to, to 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 help them sell now that business is owned by one person he's the one who developed the solution he's the one who supports the solution so when we sat down with him and uh, reviewed this product and where we wanted to take the product to, we wanted to take this product outside of Ghana. Um, first of all, we're looking at in Ghana um, about 100 um, customers and then to Liberia and um, other countries. Then I asked him a simple question. How are you going to support this product when it is only you? And you can imagine it's not possible. Today he has about nine clients he's able to support them but he cannot support 100 and if the structures are not put in place to do that his business will collapse what will happen is that he will start giving bad service then someone will come in and start providing that good service and take over the business so yes you can run it as a sole proprietorship but you will still need to have a, a properly structured company with people working in different areas because you cannot do everything yourself. Okay, look at the big businesses uh, that were created during the um, uh, uh, digital boom in the US, whether it's Microsoft, um, uh, Apple, uh, Dell Computers. All those companies were started with one person, but they then built a corporate where 
they they still own let's say majority shares they had uh they went on stock changing so they had uh, other shareholders come in bringing funds to grow the business and when we talk about those business we still talk about them as if it's a sole proprietor but it's it's it's, it's more than that so if you want the business to grow beyond the small scale that you are, do, you are doing you need to have a business structure that can support that and that will work in the regulatory environment that we are in Right. Thank you, Ebo. I hope you're okay. Another person wants to know how to incorporate project management into an... All right. So I mentioned um, that we use, for instance, teamwork. Um, I think the gold standard for project management is Microsoft um, uh, projects. Microsoft projects. Yeah, that's what... Um, existed before all these other spin-offs came. Um, the reason why we used teamwork was it's first of all it was cloud-based. Um, it, it was cloud before I think Microsoft and um, Project became cloud-based. And um, it's also extremely simple to use. Now it's designed for almost every kind of business. If you go to teamwork.com, you find more information about it. And it's not the only one. There's um, base camp, there's Asana, there are a number of um, project management tools um, out there. And so um, one way you can incorporate it in your business, in, in your IT business, I'm guessing that your IT business, you're offering IT solutions to, to others. And um, any IT solution, uh, at least for us, is a project. And a project because it has a start, it has an end, and it has various activities in, in between. And within those activities, you have certain milestones that have to be met. And so using a project management software will enable you to plan the tasks that have to be executed on, um, uh, on that project for at specific times, certain milestones that have to be attained, and then the completion of the project. And so when you use a tool like that, it also enables you to easily generate reports that you can discuss with your client. So for instance, a task is supposed, a, there's a task that is dependent on the client, that he has to provide something by a certain date, and then it allows another dependent task to continue. If you map all these out in your project management software and you are uh, having a discussion or a project review with your clients, they appreciate it more because they, they get to understand that you are on top of things, you understand the whole, whole process. And it, it also helps you over time to analyze how you executed a job, how long it took you to probably perform a particular task and see ways by which you can improve or modify that process to get to lower cost and to maximize um, revenue. So uh, because teamwork.com has a free tier, I'll suggest that go subscribe, and play with it. You have templates for different kinds of businesses and you can look at the one that best suits your business. And it allows you to collaborate with others. So um, in our company, all the staff, all our 85 staff have accounts in and that's where we, we give their task and that's where we um, track the various projects. I mentioned before that we, we, we manage about 85 projects concurrently. All of them have different timelines different deliverables. So you can imagine that it would be very difficult if we're managing this in uh, something like Excel. Uh, the project management makes it easy. Every morning it sends us a summary of what is supposed to be done, the things that have delayed, um, so on and so forth, so that we can easily follow up and, and uh, uh, meet right. the comments of the point. Yeah. Right. Th thank you so much, Ebo. Um, oh. So we, we, are, we are going to go now. There are a few other questions. And so let me just do one question and then give you time to think about it while we do a quick break and then we'll come back to take the last block of the discussion. This question has to do with um, what your take is on B2B partnerships and how the person is asking how does he exploit um, B2B partnerships to help his company grow, especially as a startup with limited financial support. Right. So. We'll go for a quick break now, small break. We're not going anywhere, but I just want everybody to take this moment now and then go um, onto our social media, give us a follow and a like right now. Um, we are across all platforms 
at Resilient Ghana, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and then there also is YouTube. So you could go on there now because we actually have a big announcement coming and we are looking to do a very nice training for SMEs in, in different sectors. And so we'll, we'll do all of that announcement on our social media exclusively. And so if you don't go now to do some following, you will miss out on that important announcement that could help you and help your business. So we'll do that now. And then we'll come back to you, Ebo, um, right away to take what your um, view is on B2B partnerships and how we can exploit it to help our startups go with limited financial um, resources. All right. Um, am I answering that now or after the break? Yes, please. Ebo, please go ahead. Okay, great. All right. Yeah, so that's that's a, a, a very good question. And um, uh, it's, it's something we've experienced as, as a company. Um, so one of the lessons we've learned is um, partnerships. And when I talk about partnerships, I'm specifically talking about B2B um, partnerships. Um, and so today... Um, we have B2B relationships with our competitors. Um, I think I heard Franklin uh, mention um, one of them. Uh, we currently have one of our closest competitors who we have partnered with to use our, our infrastructure as their backup and for them to use, for us to use their infrastructure also as a backup. All right. Um, and this was something that wasn't possible before because um, once we are businesses in the same field, we are sworn enemies. Um, uh, we must do everything to uh, destroy the other. Um, I think there's this famous quote of uh, a Japanese company. I think, uh, uh, was it Honda? Um, one of these Japanese companies, their, their vision was to destroy Yamaha. Um, and... Um, because they were in the same space and they wanted to beat them. Um, but things have changed and we find collaboration very useful. So, um, yes, um, taking advantage of B2B could help you um, either address business that you, you probably will not get um, or you cannot do alone. Okay, today... Um, uh, it's been said that the banks in Ghana cannot finance um, uh, the oil business, the offshore oil business. And so we are relying on banks from abroad. Um, but I know of situations where uh, two or three banks have come together to finance um, an oil pro um, project uh, for a company here in Ghana. And if each of those banks decide to sit in their own corner and try and raise funds themselves, they probably wouldn't benefit uh, uh, from it. So I, I see that as very valuable. And so you need to look at businesses who you can potentially partner with. Now, the example I gave in the beginning, the business that I said uh, is one of our fierce uh, 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 competitors. I say fierce because we literally bid on the same projects. Uh, they win some, uh, we lose some, we win some, they lose some. And when they began, right, when they began their business, um, they were sourcing payments through us. So we were their payment provider. Then they grew big and were able to go and get their own connection. And then um, they managed to also take over businesses that we had. They had to uh, win over some of our clients to themselves. And, and so we lost that business. But um, we... We didn't take offense in that. Um, we saw it as business. I mean, it is a business and we kept a good relationship. And so it wasn't too surprising when they came knocking on our door that, hey, can, you, can we partner so that we share infrastructure uh, to keep our business up all the time? And um, we didn't have to think much about it. We said, yes. Um, a couple of years ago, um, okay, not a couple of years, probably about six years ago, um, an opportunity came for, um, for I think, three banks. Uh, okay, an offer was made by government to 
um, I think 20 banks to offer them a service. And we got wind about the service, but they were not, off, they were not willing to offer that business opportunity to a non-bank, right? So um, we just kept monitoring and found out that they had awarded the business to three banks. So what we did was we quickly went to meet each of the three banks independently. And we, we discussed what that government agency wanted and what we believed could better meet their needs. And we managed to convince the three banks independently that we had the solution. And then we brought the three banks together and we said, look, we want the four of us to partner to deliver the business. And we spelled out exactly how they were going to benefit from um, the business. And our argument made sense. So at the end of the day, we managed to get a business. And remember, this was a business we were not allowed to bid for ourselves. They were just looking for a bank. Today, um, uh, the other partners decided to leave that business. Um, that business all belongs to us. But we would not be in that business if it wasn't for the opportunity to have the B2B and the willingness to go to each of these banks that had won it on their own right and get them to collaborate with each other and us to provide the solution. And today that's one of the solutions that is referred to as a, a partnership that really worked, okay? And bear in mind, these banks were competitors. And in a way, they were also competing with us because they were providing similar services to a client that we would have um, provided. Um, and so um, I see B2B partnerships as, as important. As IT Consortium, we've, we've been able to accomplish certain feats simply because we had those B2B um, relationships. Uh, when we began, and we didn't have money. There was a company we partnered to provide computers. Um, we used to help sell their computers for them uh, because we're dealing with universities. And when we, we provide our software, the university needs to buy computers, uh, servers, and we would encourage them to buy from this guy. And as he got more business, he also then assisted us, giving us very good payment terms to buy our computers. I told you that we switched from PCs to Macs and were very expensive. So uh, it took us quite a while to pay for it. And he gave us really good deals during that time for us to be able to pay for um, 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 that. And without that, we probably wouldn't have gone um, that route. So yeah, we didn't have the money, but we, we got the opportunity to do it. And then that led us to do other businesses that came his way. He just pointed that, look, go and address this business for me. And uh, that helped us sustain the business till. Uh, we diversified. So, so Ebo, just in case there's anybody on this call who is wondering what B2B partnerships mean, would you kindly quickly touch on it for, for, the, for 30 seconds? All right. So um, very simply, B2B is a partnership. The B stands for business. So it's business to business um, um, partnership or relationship. And so um, that's where one business is working with another business um, to um, probably address an opportunity, okay? And the examples I, I've given are businesses like us uh, partnering with other businesses who are banks or other IT companies to address a particular um, business, okay? So um, if, you, if you are running, um, maybe, I, I know one gentleman who was running a shawarma uh, business. So he, he prepares shawarma and sells to uh, customers on uh, Instagram. And as his business grew, um, he, where he was, he couldn't reach all his customers quickly. So he went to look for established restaurants and establish a B2B business relationship with them so that he could prepare his shawarma um, on cooked and send it to those kitchens and then when, or those restaurants, when he had a customer who would order the uh, shawarma, they would prepare it at that restaurant and then send it to him since it was uh, uh, by proximity closer to the customer. So he gets it hot, right? So that's an example of a B2B uh, relationship that you can foster. You might do one with uh, uh, an Okada uh, rider who is going to be your delivery partner 
So anytime you have to deliver to a customer, um, he's the one you, you do. You don't own the, the business of uh, the Okada. He just gets his fee for delivering. That's an example of a B2B. Uh, and right. take advantage of it. Um, that's what makes businesses thrive. Take advantage of it. Right. Thank you so much, Ibo. Uh, there's one thing that we have learned about B2B right this minute. It's, it is that it's not competition, but it is to enhance our business. And so we, we all should definitely take advantage of it. Um, we'll move on now to the very last part of this conversation and we'll do it really quickly. Um, it's, it's arguably the, the most interesting part of the conversation because we want, we want us to talk about a product of IT consortium. It's, it is an app that, that could help all of us. Um, and so without further ado, I just will let people get into it and then we'll talk about Chango. All right. Great. So thank you for the opportunity to even talk about it. I guess um, um, some have already seen the T-shirt I'm wearing that it's um, a Chango T-shirt, right? Right. All right. So I'll try and make this quick since um, we are virtually out of time. Um, but uh, Chango is something we created um, out of um, uh, our human need to be social, right? Um, as you know, we are very social human beings. And um, in fact, to keep saying, we need to interact with um, each other. Um, and we tend to be communal, helping um, people in need. So this past Easter, you saw a lot of um, activities to help people in need or to feed um, children. When you read the papers, you see um, various activities, celebrities or um, others would do to help and people in need. And as human beings, we also tend to form groups. And these groups could be um, uh, just friends or uh, schoolmates, um, or even family groups, or even um, sports groups. I, I know a, a group of students at Legon Campus who play football every Saturday, and, and they are a group. Or um, church groups is uh, very common um, here. Now, a lot of these groups are today organized on the so various social media um, um, platforms we have, from um, WhatsApp, which I think is, is one of the biggest, to Facebook, Signal, Telegram. And what these do is they enable us right from our mobile phone to um, be able to interact with uh, members of our group wherever they are in the world. And this wasn't possible uh, before. When I was um, nine years old and... We needed to talk to a relative in the U.S. You went to a call center and the operator would call the U.S. And when you were talking, you had to shout because that person was far away. Otherwise, they don't hear you. Today, we're doing all this um, on the phone. And we're doing this to either um, keep in touch, uh, to be part of some membership, to receive counseling, various purposes. But some of these groups have financial needs or they are together at times to provide some fin uh, financial needs. And typically how we, 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 we do that is to put money together. And we're either doing it manually by collecting money from people or today electronically using mobile money or even um, remittance. Now, when you're in such a group, trust matters a lot. The members of the group must trust each other um, because trust can break bonds and they're very fragile if there is an untrusted um, party um, in, in, in the middle of it. And also keeping a record of all these um, uh, contributions or uh, donations often um, is a hassle. And you often have to be in proximity. So uh, when I was uh, uh, straight from university doing national service, I was teaching in a, in a school. And uh, once you got there, they let you join the SUSU group. And you contribute and the money goes around. But when you leave, you've lost the opportunity. You can't be in Accra and then be still part of a group of Kepco. So it's, it's simply not possible. You need to be fiscally there to benefit, right? And then there's this high risk of the funds being stolen or misused or misplaced or lost. Uh, some years ago, I was part of a group, um, a Bible study group, and a member had lost his father and we were contributing for it. So they decided they would send the money to me. When I had to account for it, I was at loss. 
I couldn't find the money. I mean, I couldn't find the records of the money. I couldn't tell who had sent me money because various people were sending money for different purposes apart from those sending money for this uh, uh, funeral. So once I got about 80% of them, I had to add my own money to it because I didn't want to have the guilt of having misused someone's money. And I have this WhatsApp post that I'm sure some of you can um, relate to. And this is a head of a family who is... Um, telling the family members to send their contributions for um, the uh, uh, end, of the, I think the beginning of a year party in, in, in January, and and one of his uh, uh, niece nephews uh, reminding him that the last time they gave him money, uh, he chopped it and they didn't get to um, um, uh, use it. And this we are familiar with, and I'm sure if you look in the media, you're also familiar with. Um, articles about people who have stolen other savings. They were custodians of, of money, of savings, and they bolted um, with it. Now, out of this need, we um, created a product, and the product we call Chango, right? And I will quickly go through um, what Chango is. Now, Chango um, is in two parts. We have what we call a Chango private group and a Chango public group. Um, Chango essentially is a group contribution app. And in the private, we call it contribution app. In the public, we call it a crowdfunding app. And, uh, and I'll explain in, in more detail. So for the private group, just like you have WhatsApp, um, you can go to the app, create a group um, for a purpose. It could be for your school alumni. It could be for as a social group or a family club whatever. You create a group and then you invite members, to, just like you invite members to a WhatsApp group. It's just that in Chango, you can invite them by sending them a link or adding their number to it and they get a notification about it. Now, once you add the members, those members and yourself must add a means of funds. So you can add uh, your Visa or MasterCard or any of the mobile money services that currently um, exist and link them to the Chango app. So once you've done that, you can now, all the members of the group can now contribute into this group. So right now, what we've created on Chango is a group account that belongs to the members of the group. And so now each member can contribute. You can, you can contribute and allow the system to identify you. That is, all the other members can identify that you have made a contribution, or you can contribute and make it anonymous. So for instance, when we are doing uh, contributions for a funeral, uh, most people prefer to do it anonymously, so they don't know how much they gave, but there's a record that they, they, they gave. Or you can contribute on behalf of a member. And one great thing is that you can also create recurring contributions so that you don't have to always go and contribute and the system is automatically making the contributions on, on your behalf. And Tango will keep a record, a detailed record of all the contributions. So anyone can go and look at um, a record of contributions. So you see what you see on my screen? You see one member he has done two contributions, 7 September, 27 September. You see the contributions he made. Then there are those who made anonymous contributions, and you are seeing um, all those um, 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 uh, figures there. So anyone can generate a statement on demand and doesn't have to wait for someone to prepare a statement um, uh, to present. Um, it's available to all the members. Now, when the group wants to take money out of the group, uh, Tango would require that they vote. Okay, during the setting up of the group, the group administrator would have to create a policy that uh, governs how monies are taken out. And so, an, an example policy is that twenty-five percent of the members of the group must agree to the uh, cash out. So, once it's initiated, all the members of the group will be notified that the administrator wants to cash out hundred cities, and the members now have to vote and agree or disagree. Now, it takes only one member to disagree and it stops the process. But it will take the required number of members to agree before the money is sent. And the money can be sent to a bank account or a mobile uh, wallet. And also with the cash out, there are detailed uh, reports um, that tells you um, um, what uh, the funds have been taken out of the group. And you can get this as a PDF um, sent to your mail or viewing it directly um, on, on the app. And so these are also on demand, whatever you want it, and um, uh, you can share those statements. So 
for the private group, um, we've had people use it, families, for instance, um, who have used it to put money together for payment of fees. And this is where maybe one, one um, uh, family member is in Ghana, the other is in the US, uh, probably working there. And then they, they contribute every month into Chango. And then when it's time to pay the fees of the child, they simply do a cash out to the bank account of the school. And then the two parties approve it and the money goes. And so there's a lot of visibility. Or maybe siblings who are renovating their family house and they are dotted all over the country or all over the world, they can still use Tango to put money together for that purpose. Or maybe some friends who are um, uh, planning a wedding or putting contributions to um, give a friend who's having a wedding. Chango um, is, is perfect for that. Now, when we come to the public group, um, like I mentioned, the public group is what we use for crowdfunding. So the public group, unlike the private group, you can't create it on the app. That one, you apply um, uh, for, for it because the public group doesn't require members. Anyone in the world can contribute to it. So usually we require that you're either a public agency, government or NGO, um, but we have a section for um, individuals who, who need some assistance that is vetted. And once it's vetted, um, that is put um, as a crowdfunding campaign on the platform. And then once it's there, it's, like I mentioned, accessible to the entire world. Um, you don't need to be on Chango necessarily to contribute. So we've used this for a number of projects. Uh, Save a Hat uh, uh, um, initiative is, is where we are looking for a million Ghanaians to contribute five CDs every month so that um, Kolobu can pay for the surgery for children with hole in heart, meaning that the parents won't have to spend a dime for their uh, uh, children who have to go for a whole heart operation. That's a very expensive um, uh, operation. And we believe that if we get just a million Ghanaians contributing five cities a month, that will be for it. All right. And then we've also used it to raise funds for the um, Keta um, um, uh, and Ketu South and uh, district floods that happened um, uh, early, I think early this year, late last year. Um, and we, we use Chango to get funds for that. So the public group works just like the private groups where you use the various um, channels of payment to do the contributions. But one big difference is that beyond the app, it's also available on the web. So people can go straight to the web and do the contribution or use USSD to um, do those contributions online. And so we have a number of NGOs who are using this for various courses um, today. A lot of donor agencies want NGOs in the country to raise their own funds. And this is a great way by which you can raise funds in a community for um, projects. Um, we have people who are raising funds just like the uh, uh, Save a Hat um, to pay for surgery. Um, and we have some interesting companies who are using it to ra raise debt um, to finance startups, all right? And so it has a number of use cases. Um, before we could come out with this, we had to have it approved by the central bank. So you can be sure that the funds are contributed in, uh, your, 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 your money is safe. But we created Chango um, to solve the problems um, uh, that I mentioned before, to make it convenient, to create the transparency um, um, that we need for something that we already do, putting money together for various causes. It is safe, it's social, and um, at the end of this, I would love you to um, visit the site and um, download and use it. Who knows, it might, you might be able to find a use case to um, uh, help you raise funds for your business. Actually, um, I know someone who has used Chango um, with his family members to raise capital to start up their business, all right? So the members of the family uh, contributed uh, various sums of money and some of those members were outside of the country and they can contribute directly into Chango and then they use that money to um, kickstart um, their business. So if you go to the site, you find a link um, to the various apps we have for um, uh, iOS and Android and um, you can download and um, uh, uh, use it. So um, thank you. And this is... Uh, Thank you so much, Ebo. Um, 
we, my, I'm restraining myself strongly from asking if Chango is free. So I'm going to go ahead and ask, what is the cost of using Chango? Okay. So, um, yes, Chango is free. <laughs> um, you don't pay for downloading the app. Now, um, when you are contributing into Chango, um, the current charges that exist on any of the channels, um, you, you'll be paying that. So if you use MTN Mobile Money, for instance, and you're contributing, um, MTN will charge you, I think, 0.75% um, um, that applies. Um, I think at Vodafone um, charges uh, is 1% or so. If you are using card, um, depending on the kind of card you are using, there are charges, but there is no other fee associated. Now, let me bring in also the e-levy, because people would, if they haven't asked that question already, they'll be asking how does this uh, comply with e-levy. Um, so before e-levy came, when you are cashing out, there was actually no fee whatsoever. Um, so uh, um, now, if you are cashing out to a bank account, there will be no fee at the moment. Um, but if you are cashing out to a mobile wallet, then e-levy um, may apply. We are still waiting for confirmation on that, but that's the indication we have so far. Um, uh, so yes, Chango is free in the sense that you don't pay to, to get it. Uh, you can get your friends, do your contributions, uh, take the money out whenever um, um, you want to. Uh, at the moment, there's no fee on cash out, um, but like I said, e-levy fees would uh, be applying soon. And then um, uh, when, uh, uh, um, when we, we launched this, I think in, in November, um, we'll be doing some updates later this year to introduce um, things like um, investments where the group can keep its money in um, a high investment instrument with a bank until um, they are ready to take it out. And um, uh, we'll communicate that if there are any associated fees at that point. Yeah. Right. Um, someone wants to know how safe Chango is. And I'm sure there's a lot of questions. Someone also wants to know how safe Chango is. And I think this is, this is I'm not sure from what angle he's asking, but um, off, off the top of my head, again, if you permit me, because this is a safe space and we want to learn, um, I'm sure a lot of people are wondering what your business model is. Why would you create this and make it absolutely free? And so how do you make money off of Chango as an organization? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, and I'll point you to a couple of things. Um, Facebook is free, right? Um, WhatsApp is free. And, and the question is, um, how does that work out? Um, well, in, in this space, you come to learn that numbers matter. And so when you have a critical mass of people um, on a social platform, um, there are ways beyond just the service to generate um, um, uh, uh, funds, all right? Um, at the moment, um, we have a unique uh, uh, arrangement with um, the, the payment channels such that although we don't add anything to the fee, um, they share a portion of the fee with us. Um, so that's the current revenue model. Um, but that will be changing um, later on. When that changes, I can share that as well. Now, on the issue of uh, safety, I'll take it from two angles. Um, first of all, um, we launched Chango three years ago in Kenya, and it took us about that long to have it launched in Ghana because it was being vetted by the central bank. And at the time, there was no law for crowdfunding in Ghana. So it was only when they uh, finished coming up with the... Um, um, with uh, regulation on uh, crowdfunding, did they give us a license to do it? So Chango is a platform that the central bank um, uh, monitors. We are required to send reports every single month to the central bank and they vet it. And they, every new feature we add, the central bank must authorize it. Now, IT Consortium is not the one who keeps the money. We are not a, a company licensed to keep money. And so it's, the, it's a, a bank, a commercial bank that holds the funds. And it's done in such a way that um, we don't have direct access to the funds. It's only the instructions, the group 
gives for the funds that the bank is holding that are cashed out to them. So in terms of the funds being secure, yes, it's, it's, it's very secure. In terms of the platform itself um, being secure, um, first of all, on the IT side of things, and uh, this is where you're, you're, you'll be concerned about hackers and, and all that, um, we were required to um, meet certain international um, standards for security, and the platform is also independently um, monitored and scanned by a security firm um, based in, in London um, that uh, we use for our audits, our yearly audits. So um, outside the once yearly audits, they do periodic audits um, every month um, independent to make sure that the security protocols that they audited are still in place and that there are no vulnerabilities um, uh, on the system. Now, for the groups themselves, the security we created was to make sure that people couldn't um, simply form a group, um, entice people to come into the group, uh, contribute, and then steal the money. Um, and so when you are joining a group, for instance, Chango would tell you what the policy of the group is. It would tell you that the one who created the group, he set it up that only he, or only two people can, um, uh, what do you call it, vote to cash out money, or that 25% of the members have to, um, uh, uh, what do you call it, agree for a cash out, and that the group has the ability to borrow uh, money, so and so forth. You have all that information that is presented to you to take a decision before you join. So it's not necessarily like WhatsApp where you get a link, you join, and you are in but you are presented with information about a group before you join. And you can leave the group anytime. Um, if you join a group, once you make a contribution, you, the, uh, the administrators can't simply kick you out. They have to get the members of the group to vote to agree to kick a member out. So you can't just be kicked out once you have contributed money to the group. And because there's a record of every contribution um, that is done by you yourself. Even when you make anonymous contributions, it's still tagged to you. It's just that it doesn't show up in any of the reports uh, uh, to the general um, members that you've made a contribution. So if there's any dispute, it's very easy to have um, those records. And like I mentioned, a copy of those records are also with uh, the central bank that if there's any dispute, that can be addressed. So. Um, because of these, we've not had any issue to date on uh, the security of the funds or the management of the groups. But, you know, um, these things are fluid. And so we, we, we monitor and continue to make tweaks as we go along to uh, meet the current demand. Right. Thank you, Ebo. Are there any more questions on Chango? And it will, it will interest you to know that I have my big sister on this call and she has just texted me to, to let me know that we'll start doing things on Chango. And, 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 and so, <laughs> so, that's good. Um, and that's good. Right. So I'm sure a lot of people on this call are excited about Chango. And um, just to let everybody know that it is absolutely free, like Tebo said, and the only charges that, that apply are definitely like the standard charges that we would use if we're using other platforms and so thank you so much Ibo. Is, uh, do you have any final words and um, we're just about closing off in uh, the absence of any questions do you have any final words well um uh so um i'm i'm i, I must say thank you again for the opportunity to um, um share uh, it's, it's always um an honor to 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 share um, and in what I would encourage um, us to do is not to relent on the drive to create businesses. Um, if you look at what's happening in the world, um, Africa has become a big attraction, really big attraction to the world. Um, if you travel in Africa, you'd be amazed at um, how many um, uh, uh, should I say foreigners who are interested in doing business in Africa because they see a lot of opportunity. Ghana has a lot of opportunity. In fact, I've always said that wherever there are problems, there are opportunities. So when I hear 
at times people say that there are too many problems in Ghana, so let me go out and uh, uh, to the US or to Canada or to Europe. The fact is that they've solved a lot of their problems, so most likely you won't get a problem to solve. You probably just have to work for someone. Um, if you go on YouTube, you find people who have left the US to Ghana because there is a business they can only do in Ghana. They can't do there. They don't even have the financial might to start a grocery shop, but they can start it here because of um, how things are here, the kind of challenges we have. So take advantage of the problems in Ghana and find a solution. Because if you find a very good solution, you would be successful. And there's one thing I wanted to mention. It was at the back of my mind to mention, and I guess it's the opportunity to mention, that um, don't make money your objective, okay? Make solving the problem your objective, and the money will come. Um, when we focus too much on the money, we tend to be short-sighted. And I, I have seen this, and it works. When I see a government, for instance, that is um, um, uh, 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 embarking on a project, and the project is to solve a problem. It is not necessarily just to make money. They tend to do it better than if it was, the objective was to do money. I've seen this in government. I've seen this in business. I've seen it in individual lives. So don't make money the objective. Make the problem, the solution to a problem, the objective. And then you get very good at it that people will be willing to pay you um, uh, to deliver that um, solution. Um, uh, and be, be willing to, um, to, walk, um, to, to, to walk that path you've taken because it's not all rosy. It's difficult. I mentioned that there were times um, I thought this tomorrow was going to be the end of IT Consortium. And uh, I thought uh, there were times we had no clients at all and we had no money to pay salaries. Um, and it, it was very difficult, but we, we kept at it and um, opportunity after opportunity came, problem after problem came. And some of the problems is what created the business opportunities we have. The biggest problem we had in our beginning was payments. And that is now the biggest, it forms over 90% of our revenue today at IT Consortium. Um, the, the, what we started with has dropped to like 10%. And now... The, the problem, little problem we solved is 90%. And you, you would see things like that happen if you keep at it and um, don't give up. Right. Thank you very much, Ibo. Um, I'm sure everybody has taken a feather from, from your cup, um, definitely from all of the experiences that you have shared. Thank you so very much. Guys, we, you have no idea how lucky we are today. Ibo is super, super busy. He's super swamped every minute of the day. And so to have able to spend two hours with us is, is nothing short of an honor. I hope that it has been worth our time. And um, I'm, unfortunately today, I haven't been able to say hi to everybody on the call. But if you are new here, we appreciate your time. We hope that you really have learned something. And we are here on this safe space for entrepreneurs and young professionals and even students every second Saturday of the month. Do like and follow our pages on, on Facebook, on Instagram, and on Twitter. And also check us out at YouTube if you have missed any session. All of our previous sessions are up on YouTube. And so you could take a look at it. I assure you that it will make a difference in your business and in your entrepreneurial life. Um, thank you so much, Ebo, for coming. Um, Ebo, I'm going to put you on the spot now and ask you if you are available to mentor um, anybody. And if you are available... Um, to answer questions from the participants and people who have listened to you. Um, is this something you'd be willing to do? Yes. Um, once we schedule it, um, yeah, I'll be willing to do that. Um, Thank I you. Have, Thank you so I have much. Some free times coming up in the next month, so we could, we could look at... Um, right, right. Okay. Thank you very much. We are super grateful. And so you have heard it from Ebo. If you want able to answer any questions you have on your entrepreneurial journey, um, do reach out to us. Join our Telegram platform and do reach out to us. We'll put you in, in touch with Ebo and then he will have a session with you for a few minutes, free of charge, of course. Um, and I'm sure it will be worth your time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ebo. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Resilient Ghana, for putting um, this together. And we'll see you again 
next month. Have a good week and enjoy your journey.